Hi, welcome to another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe. This week, Miss Erica is dressed up like a guy who just makes YouTube videos of animals biting him. Because this week we're looking at a story where Paul gets bitten by a viper. All right, let's get started. This week, you're going to finish out the Book of Acts as a family. Woohoo! You read the whole Book of Acts. So you want to read Acts 27 and Acts 28 together as a family this week. Let's see where we're at in our big Bible timeline. Remember, Paul is in the middle of his third missionary journey. He has gotten on a boat from Caesarea, and the Roman guards are trying to take him all the way to Rome which he's excited about. Remember, we learned when we looked at the book of Romans that Paul has always wanted to go and visit the church in Rome. And Paul doesn't care if he has to get there being a prisoner. So Paul's on this boat and Luke is actually there too because when we read these stories in Acts 27 and 28, Luke keeps saying, we did this and we did that. So we know that Luke is also on this boat with Paul. And we learn there's actually over 200 other people on this boat, sailors, passengers, and even Roman soldiers, along with Paul and Luke. And they're all trying to get to Rome. But God has other plans. The problem with this trip to Rome, though, is that they have to go through the Mediterranean Sea. And it was getting to be winter. So in the Mediterranean Sea, there's actually a ton of storms in the winter, and it's really hard to sail through that part of the world during this season. So the farther they get on their journey, the harder and harder it is to get to where they're going. Paul actually warns them that they should stop, but they don't listen, and they keep trying to get to Rome. At one point, they end up in a terrible storm. And actually, the Bible says that the boat gets smashed by the waves and everybody has to actually swim to shore or hold on to bits of broken boat and float onto the beach. And God keeps everybody safe, but they end up on this island that no one was planning to come to. They don't even know what it is at first when they get there. But they learn that the island is called Malta. Malta is actually a super duper tiny island. You can look it up on a real map. It's still called Malta. It's near Italy, but it's very tiny. Here it is on the map for you guys to see. So they get to the island of Malta. They build a fire and some of the indigenous people who live on Malta come out to greet them. All of a sudden, a poisonous snake bites Paul in the hand. But Paul doesn't get sick. He just shakes it off and goes about his day. And then a little bit later, Paul prays for the dad of the village chief. The village chief's dad was very, very sick. But Paul prays for him and Jesus heals him. And then people from all over the island, anybody who is sick, comes to meet Paul. And Paul prays for them too. And Jesus heals all of them. And so Paul and his friends end up staying on the island of Malta for three months. And Paul gets to tell everybody about who Jesus is. God wants everyone to have an opportunity to hear about Jesus and to make him their king. But there were people living on the island of Malta who had never heard about Jesus. And no missionary was planning to go to Malta not even Paul. It was so tiny. All Paul was thinking about was getting to Rome, this big, important city. But God loved the people on Malta, this unreached people group, so much that he sent Paul and a shipwreck and a storm to crash land on the beach just so these people on Malta could hear about Jesus and have an opportunity to make him their king. God wants every single person, no matter where they live, to have an opportunity to make Jesus their king. This week, we're going to play Ready, Set, Go. Remember that game we used to play every week together on Zoom? Okay. Ready, Set, Go! Go find toys that are similar but different. So like a bunch of different Barbie dolls, but maybe they all have different color hair. 
or a bunch of action figures, but they're all different, or even a bunch of race cars that are all different colors. Go! Okay, now I want you to line them up and pick one and put it to the side, away from all the other ones. Think about how it would feel if you were that one toy. If you were left out or uninvited or didn't have an opportunity to come to a party or to meet a new friend. That's how God feels about these unreached people groups. People that just don't have an opportunity yet to meet Jesus, to make him their king and their friend, and to experience his great new life, to be invited into his forever party. And it's not because they've done anything to deserve that. They're just unreached. Maybe their tribe is hard to get to, or maybe the idols they worship make it very hard for them to hear about Jesus right now. But no matter what, Jesus cares so much about these people, and he wants them all to have an opportunity to make him their king. God still cares about every people group having an opportunity to hear about Jesus and make him their king. In this week's parent email, I included a link which has an interactive map that your family can check out. You can see and find out about unreached people groups on the other side of the world that don't know Jesus, but even unreached people groups living right here in Washington, D.C., who do not know Jesus yet and who need an opportunity to make him their king. So be sure to check that out as a family and spend some time praying for one unreached people group this week. All right, this week, tell your mom to be brave and come on out to family large group at the park. There's not that many cicadas and we're gonna have a lot of fun worshiping together. I can't wait to see you guys there. We'll be there at 10.30 a.m. at the large shelter by the lake. And actually, Mr. Ming Yu is teaching. So I hope you guys can make it. All right, it's been so fun hanging out with you. Thanks for watching another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe.